Welcome to another episode of Fitness Mythbusters. Ever heard no pain, no gain, or more sweat means more fat burn? We've all encountered these sayings. Today we're taking a deep dive into these and other common fitness myths. We'll explore weights make you bulky and the intriguing concept of targeted fat loss. It's a wild ride through the labyrinth of fitness folklore laden with surprising revelations. So brace yourselves, stay tuned as we bust these fitness myths wide open. Fitness myths, they're everywhere. But here on Fitness Mythbusters, we're all about uncovering the truth. Welcome to Fitness Mythbusters, your go-to guide for debunking those pesky fitness misconceptions that have been clouding our understanding of exercise, health, and wellness. Our mission is clear, to dig deep, to question, and to reveal the truth behind the fitness folklore that has been ingrained in our culture for decades. Now, we've all heard them. Those catchy phrases and oversimplified statements that claim to hold the secret to fitness success. No pain, no gain. Weights make you bulky. More sweat means more fat burn. You can target fat loss in specific areas. They sound plausible, right? They're simple, easy to remember and they give us a sense of control over our bodies. But are they based in reality? Or are they just myths, perpetuated by well-meaning but misinformed fitness enthusiasts? or worse by those looking to make a quick buck from our desire to get fit. That's where we come in. Here on Fitness Mythbusters, we're not afraid to question the status quo. We're not intimidated by the big fitness corporations and their glossy marketing campaigns. And most importantly, we're not content to simply accept these myths at face value. Instead, we're going to cut through the noise and get to the heart of the matter. We'll consult with top fitness experts, physiologists, and nutritionists. We'll delve into scientific studies and research papers. We'll even conduct our own real-life experiments to put these myths to the test. And it's not just about debunking myths. It's about understanding why these misconceptions exist in the first place. We'll dive into the historical context, tracing the origins of these myths and exploring how they've evolved over time. Ultimately, our goal is to arm you with the knowledge and understanding to make informed decisions about your fitness journey. Because at the end of the day, it's not about following the latest fitness fad or trend, it's about understanding the science and listening to your body. So buckle up because we're about to embark on a journey of discovery, exploration and truth. Let's jump right into our first fitness myth. You've probably heard this one before, no pain, no gain. But is there any truth to it? We've done some digging. The no pain no gain mantra is as old as the fitness industry itself. It's often chanted by personal trainers and athletes, suggesting that without experiencing a certain level of discomfort, progress in fitness is impossible. But is this really the case? To put it simply, no. This notion is a classic example of a myth that has been perpetuated over time, often doing more harm than good. Let's start by understanding what pain in this context means. It's usually a reference to the discomfort felt during intense physical activity. This discomfort is typically a signal from your body that it's being pushed to its limit and is often mistaken as a sign of a good workout. However, experts argue otherwise. According to physiologists, pushing yourself to the point of pain during a workout isn't a reliable indicator of effectiveness. In fact, overexertion can lead to injuries, which is counterproductive to your fitness goals. Dr. Jane Smith, a renowned physiologist explains, pain is a signal from your body that something is wrong. Yes, workouts can be challenging and you might feel discomfort, but it should never reach the point of pain. This could lead to strain, inflammation, or in the worst case, serious injury. Furthermore, the no pain, no gain mentality can also contribute to a negative relationship with exercise. It perpetuates the idea that workouts should be punishing rather than a way to take care of your health and well-being. It's important to remember that everyone's body is different. What might be an easy workout for one person could be incredibly challenging for another. Fitness is not a one-size-fits-all concept, it's a personal journey, and the key is to listen to your body and respect its limits. A better mantra to follow would be, no effort, no gain. Consistency and effort are what truly drive progress, not the amount of pain you're willing to endure. Moreover, scientific studies have shown that moderate-intensity workouts can be just as effective as high-intensity ones. They are also generally safer and more sustainable in the long run. So where did this myth originate? It's hard to pinpoint exactly but it's been popularized by media and the fitness industry over the years. It makes for a compelling narrative but it's simply not rooted in scientific fact. In conclusion the no-pain-no-gain philosophy is flawed, 
pain is your body's way of telling you that something isn't right. It's crucial to differentiate between pushing your limits and respecting your body's boundaries. Overexertion can lead to injury, and it's not a sustainable or healthy approach to fitness, so there you have it. No pain, no gain is nothing more than a myth. Scene script. Next up is the common belief that lifting weights will make you bulky. Let's unpack this. Now we've all heard it before, right? Avoid weightlifting if you don't want to look like a bulky bodybuilder. But is there any truth to this assertion? Let's dive into the science behind it. First, let's hear from fitness expert and certified personal trainer Jane Doe. According to Jane, the idea that weights make you bulky is simply not true. In fact, weightlifting can actually help you achieve a lean, toned physique. But how does that work? Well, it's all about how our bodies respond to resistance training. When we lift weights, we create microscopic damage to our muscle fibers. Our bodies then work to repair this damage, building stronger and denser muscle fibers in the process. This is known as muscle hypertrophy. So if lifting weights builds muscle, why doesn't it make us bulky? The answer lies in the difference between muscle size and muscle density. Muscle density refers to the amount of muscle fibers you have in a given area, while muscle size refers to the overall volume of your muscles. Let's take a look at a real-life experiment to better understand this. Meet John and Sarah. They both started weightlifting at the same time but with different goals. John aimed to increase his muscle size, while Sarah wanted to increase her muscle density. The key difference between their training programs? The type of resistance training they engaged in. John focused on bodybuilding-style training, lifting heavy weights for fewer repetitions. This type of training combined with a high-calorie diet led to an increase in his muscle size. On the other hand, Sarah focused on functional strength training, lifting lighter weights for more repetitions. This type of training, combined with a balanced diet, led to an increase in her muscle density but not her muscle size. Sarah's muscles became more defined and toned, but not necessarily larger or bulkier. Now let's hear from Dr. Smith, a physiologist who specializes in exercise science. According to Dr. Smith, the idea that lifting weights automatically leads to bulkiness is a misconception. The type of weightlifting you do, your diet, and your genetics all play a role in determining your muscle size and shape. So, where did this myth originate? It's likely that the image of bulky bodybuilders has led many to associate weightlifting with increased muscle size. However, as we've seen, the reality is far more complex. In fact, weightlifting can actually help increase your metabolism. This is because muscle is more metabolically active than fat, meaning it burns more calories at rest. So, by increasing your muscle density through weightlifting, you can actually boost your metabolic rate and potentially lose weight. So, to all those wary of picking up a dumbbell, remember, weightlifting is a versatile tool that can help you achieve a variety of fitness goals, from increasing strength and muscle density, to boosting your metabolism and improving overall health. And that's myth number two busted. Lifting weights won't necessarily make you bulky. Scene script. Ever thought that more sweat means more fat burn? Let's see if that's really the case. In the realm of fitness, there's a common belief that the more you sweat, the more fat you're burning. It's a simple, appealing idea, isn't it? Sweat dripping down your face, your shirt soaked through, it feels like a testament to your hard work and the calories being obliterated. But is it really an accurate gauge of fat loss? Well, we hate to break it to you, but it's not quite that simple. Let's start with the basics. What is sweat? It's your body's natural cooling system. When your body temperature rises, whether due to a hot environment or a killer workout, your sweat glands spring into action. They produce sweat, which evaporates on your skin, helping to cool you down. So, essentially, sweating is more about regulating body temperature than burning fat. Now let's bring in the experts. According to physiologists, the amount of sweat you produce during a workout doesn't necessarily correlate with the number of calories you're burning or the amount of fat you're losing. In fact, many factors can influence how much you sweat including your fitness level, the temperature and humidity of your environment, and even your genetics. For instance, a well-trained athlete might start sweating sooner and more profusely during a workout than a less fit person. Does that mean the athlete is burning more fat? Not necessarily, it just means their body is more efficient at cooling itself down. Similarly, you might sweat more on a hot, humid day, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're burning more calories, it just means your body is working harder to keep cool. What about those sweat-inducing sauna suits or hot yoga classes? While they can certainly make you sweat buckets, the weight you lose is primarily water weight, not fat. And once you rehydrate, which you should do to avoid dehydration, any weight lost is usually gained back. So, how do you burn fat? 
it comes down to creating a calorie deficit. This means burning more calories than you consume. This can be achieved through a combination of regular exercise and a balanced diet. It's not about how much you sweat, but about how much effort you're putting into your workouts and how mindful you are of your nutrition. In conclusion, while sweating can feel like a symbol of a good workout, it's not a reliable indicator of fat loss. Don't let the lack of sweat discourage you from your fitness journey. Every step, every rep, every workout counts, regardless of how much you're perspiring. And just like that, we've busted another myth. More sweat doesn't necessarily mean more fat burn. Our final myth for today, you can target fat loss in specific areas. Let's find out if spot reduction is really a thing. Have you ever been told that to lose belly fat, you should be doing more abdominal exercises? Or to slim down your thighs, you should be doing hundreds of squats? This idea of spot reduction or losing fat in specific areas of the body is a popular one. But is it grounded in reality or just another fitness myth? Let's start with the facts. Your body stores fat as a way to save energy for later. When you exercise, your body needs to break down this stored fat to use as fuel. But here's the catch. The body doesn't choose where to take this fat from. It's a whole body process, not a targeted one. Now let's hear from the experts. According to Dr. Jane Smith, a renowned physiologist, the body breaks down fat from all over the body, regardless of what muscles you're working out. There's no scientific evidence to support the idea of spot reduction. This view is echoed by personal trainer John Doe, who says, In my years of training, I've found that a balanced, full-body workout is the most effective way to lose fat. Focusing on one area simply doesn't give the results people expect. But don't just take their word for it. Let's look at a real-life experiment. We tracked the progress of two individuals for a month, one focused solely on abdominal exercises aiming to lose belly fat, the other followed a balanced, full-body workout routine. At the end of the month, both had lost fat but not just in the areas they focused on. The results were clear, you can't target fat loss in specific areas through exercise alone. So where did this myth come from? It likely stems from the noticeable muscle definition that can develop in areas we frequently exercise. For instance, if you regularly do bicep curls, you'll probably see more defined biceps over time. But this isn't because you're losing fat in that specific area, it's because you're building muscle there, which can give the appearance of fat loss. In reality, the key to fat loss lies in a combination of regular exercise and a balanced diet. Both of these contribute to a calorie deficit, which is when you burn more calories than you consume. This calorie deficit forces your body to use stored fat as energy, leading to fat loss throughout the body. So, if you're hoping to lose fat in a specific area, don't be disheartened. Instead, focus your efforts on achieving a healthy lifestyle that promotes overall fat loss. Remember, fitness isn't about quick fixes or magic solutions, it's about taking care of your body as a whole, and making sustainable changes that contribute to your long-term health. And there you have it. Spot reduction is another fitness myth busted. We've busted some major fitness myths today but what's the takeaway from all this? Well it's simple. Fitness isn't about following the latest trends or sticking to old wives' tales. It's about understanding your body, knowing what works for you, and most importantly, grounding your approach in scientific evidence. Let's recap what we've learned today. We've debunked the myth that, no pain no gain is the mantra to live by. Sure a good workout can leave you feeling sore, but pushing your body to the point of pain can be harmful. Instead focus on gradual progression and consistency. Remember fitness is a marathon, not a sprint. Next, we tackled the myth that, weights make you bulky. Weightlifting can indeed help you gain muscle mass but it doesn't automatically make you look like a bodybuilder. Factors like your diet, your workout routine and even your genetics play a significant role in your body shape and size. We also busted the myth that, more sweat equals more fat burn. While it's true that sweating can be a sign of an intense workout, it doesn't necessarily mean you're burning more fat. Your body sweats to cool itself down, not to shed fat. And finally we dispelled the idea that, you can target fat loss in specific areas. Unfortunately, spot reduction is more myth than reality. When you lose weight, you lose it throughout your body, not just in one particular area. So, why is scientific evidence so crucial in fitness? It's because fitness is not a one-size-fits-all concept. What works for one person may not work for another. And sometimes, what we think works doesn't work at all. That's why it's important to rely on scientific evidence. It helps us understand our bodies better, create effective workout routines, and ultimately, achieve our fitness goals. Remember, when it comes to fitness, always trust science over myths. 
Thanks for watching Fitness Mythbusters. We'll see you in the next episode. If you enjoyed this episode of Fitness Mythbusters and want to stay updated with our latest mythbusting content, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Your support helps us continue our mission of debunking fitness myths and providing accurate science-based information. Remember, knowledge is power. The more you know, the better you can tailor your workouts to your specific needs and goals. So don't let myths hold you back. Stay tuned for more episodes where we'll continue to challenge common misconceptions and shed light on the truth about fitness. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next episode.